Hi, my name is Marisol Perez, and I am an associate professor in the Department of Psychology here at ASU. Hi, my name is Leah Doan. I am a professor in the Department of Psychology, and I'm also the area head uh, for the developmental area of graduate training. Uh, my name is Carolyn Cavanaugh-Toft, and I am a principal lecturer in the Department of Psychology. I'm also a licensed psychologist, and I have a small clinical practice. So what is senioritis? Really, the hallmark of it is a loss of motivation. It can be associated, some symptoms that are associated with senioritis could be forgetfulness about turning in assignments or really finding that last um, umph or piece of energy to complete an assignment, even if it's an easy assignment that they can complete. And most research actually suggests that um, it stems some from burnout. It also stems some from feelings of anxiety um, about the future or about something coming to an end. It also can come from um, just feeling overwhelmed. Maybe they're working a job. Maybe they're involved in a couple of different uh, clubs and taking on leadership positions and their coursework is getting more challenging. And then on top of that, we throw in this issue of helping students to figure out what they want to do after senior year. So applying for graduate school or, or looking for a job. And I often will encourage students to think of that additional planning for the future, like a three credit course. Think of that as being a three credit course that you're not paying for and you're not getting academic credit for. But if you can allot that amount of time, it will help them to feel a little bit less overwhelmed. I think what becomes really important is this idea of engagement. And so thinking about continuing the, the engagement not just in the way that they've established, but maybe new engagement. So helping seniors to realize that there's still things they haven't explored yet that likely exist and helping them to think about how they can give back to the community that they got so much from. So just focus on what you have to do today and make that very concrete, very tangible and schedule it. But it only helps if you also reward yourself. So set goals and reward yourself. And when we say re rewards, things that are meaningful to you um, and things that break up the monotony of your day-to-day -day life. For some students, just being able to check off boxes is really motivating and really rewarding to them. And so organizing and setting a schedule can really help to accomplish those concrete goals and those rewards that you set for yourself. Some of that anxiety about the future that comes from senioritis actually comes a little bit from some imposter syndrome, right? And this idea of maybe I'm not ready or maybe I'm not prepared. And oftentimes one way to combat things like imposter syndrome is to help others. So to do things like providing support for um, more junior students, um, helping to reinvest in those community initiatives that helped you so much, and also taking all that knowledge that you've gained and helping other people and giving it to other people in a useful way. So we just want to point to families about two resources we have here at ASU that really help students with career success. The first is the Career Center, which is really dedicated to helping students find their first career after they graduate and, go and enter the job market. And so though they have a number of resources, a number of online resources available to help students succeed and maximize their potential. But also using ASU's alumni networks. So because we're this great large institution with great connections across the state, many departments and schools have very strong alumni networks that help students be able to connect to those individuals even um, more closely. Finding a mentor who's in your chosen profession, that can become very important in terms of thinking about what are the right next steps? What is the right type of graduate school? Should I go to graduate school immediately or should I get some job experience first? So I know oftentimes parents have so much excitement for their students as they're finishing up their undergraduate years and they want to ask the question, what are you going to do next? What's next? Um, and I encourage parents to use it as a listening point, right? 
So it's okay to ask every once in a while, but students can often feel a lot of pressure um, during this time to know exactly what they're going to do. And some might not, some might need a little bit more time to figure that out. I think the other thing that's challenging about senior year is that students are now reaching, have reached adulthood. This is a challenging time. This is a watershed time for them. And for families to recognize that their relationship with their student may be changing. And this is where really waiting for the student to ask for advice becomes really helpful. And recognizing that even if your advice is the best advice in the world, that your student may not take it. And that's okay. That's part of what is, that's part of the process of growing up and, and, and maturing and, and figuring out what they want.